So, um, right off the bat, I feel an urge to apologize to all of you. Um, the latter half of 2023 did not exactly go according to plan. Um, there was uh, a number of factors offline, as well as a number of factors online, that uh, just really got me really down. Just really down in the dumps. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the first quarter of 2024 is honestly not looking very much better than the second half of 2023 did. So uh, in terms of producing um, a continuing commentary on uh, Osama Sentai King Oger and other such things, uh, I sincerely apologize. Um, I failed. Um, I disappointed, and I'm not going to be holding it against anybody else other than myself, obviously. Um, but I did say on my community page at the uh, on like January 1st, January 2nd of 2024 that uh, one of the things I was planning to do was I was going to do uh, a commentary on the first official pictures from Chekhov. How is how's it pronounced? It's not. Is it ba Bakuage? Ba Baku Baku how, how did... ba Bakuage. 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 Bakuage Sente Boon Boonger. I said in that post, and I'll link it in the description below, that, um, yeah, it's it's my life's kind of depressing, and, and it's not doing very well right now. But uh, one of the things that I would be doing is an audio, audio commentary on the, or first reaction to the official pictures. Now, of course, I'm recording this on February 5th, 2024. The official pictures have been out for about three days at this point, and Literally, that's just me being lazy at this point. So I, I saw them come out like, Ava, come on, get your ass in gear. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. So, um, oh yeah, by the way, uh, check out, say hello to the world again. Hello. For the second time, uh, you are you are doing this with me. This is two years in a row now. We're, we're on a roll. This is now officially a pattern. This is a thing. Yeah, I'm really glad to be here. As of recording, I'm, I'm actually kind of ashamed of myself for this. I have not watched a single episode of Osama Sentai King Ojo. Here we are, three weeks before the series finale, and I have not touched it yet. I prefer to preserve spoilers. I do not like spoilers, not in the slightest. So I can't even really talk about it. But Chekhov, uh, the floor is yours for a moment. What did you think of Osama Sentai King Ojo? Well, I have to say that it is a pretty good show. Um, pretty cinematic, to be honest. And whoever who doesn't haven't watched the show yet, I would re highly recommend it to watch it because uh, almost every episode feels like a f final episode because it's so well done. And yeah, there are times you're going to cry. It, it is a great, great Sentai season. I will highly recommend it to whoever hasn't watched it. From what I've seen, and, and this is something that impressed me, I was I, I've seen clips of like the first episodes or whatever it is, but not enough to like tell me what's really happening. But as I understand it, there's so much, or so, yeah, let me rephrase. There's so many visual effects. It's almost unlike anything that Super Sentai's ever done before. As I understand it, they've been doing a lot of filming in front of green screen and blue screen far more than they've ever done before. And when I was looking at the show, I was like, yeah. my God, Toei, where where do you have the budget to be able to make a show this intent on visual effects? It's absolutely incredible. Is, is that yeah. off the mark, what I'm thinking? Yeah, it is. It's a great job what they have done. And I see some people uh, that complain about it, but I'm going to be honest. They have done a great job. It, it is so great. Like, yeah, I might sound like a fan, uh, but that's not the case. I'm just being honest with what I'm saying, and I just appreciate what they have done. Uh, and maybe you may not know this, Ava, but I started watching Sentai since 2020 when Kira Major uh was basically over and they were uh i think Kaya was airing so i decided to give it a chance uh to kira major and then i saw like in sentai so i barely have watched maybe five sentai seasons so i don't consider myself like a high sentai fan 
but Uncapped to admit that they have done a great job for Kino Year, you know, compared with those previous Sentai. So what what you're going through right now is what I went through maybe 20 years ago. I discovered Super Sentai in fall of 2003, but I wasn't able to watch it with my own eyes until 2005 because I didn't know about fan subs at the time, nor did I know how to get my hands on them at the time. And so when 2005... 2005 was my transition year. Like, I learned about Super Sentai in, like, fall of 2003... And, and it was just kind of random by accident. I was, I think I was, I don't remember what it was I was doing at the time, but uh, probably reeling from my diagnosis of Asperger's syndrome. That's what it was. But anyways, um, I just stumbled across, uh, let's see, 2003, so it would have been Ninja Storm. Power Rangers Ninja Storm was on the air at the time. Good show, by the way. Haven't watched it since. <laughs> but um, I... Uh, I saw pictures of what would come to be known as the Albert Ranger, and uh, I was like, "What is this? This the, these are dinosaurs, but what what is this? This Power Rangers knockoff, whatever is? Oh, this is from the latest Super Sentai that's airing right now." And I thought to myself, "Wait a minute! I was told back in 1993 by one of my dad's friends." that this show called Power Rangers was based off of something in in Japan called Zoo Ranger, like Z-O-O, Zoo Ranger. And I looked at the underside of my uh, deluxe Titanus Securizard, which, for the record, I still have to this day, still have it. If you look at the underside, it's all in Japanese. It's in very bold DX King Brachion, but of course you can't read it. Uh, Ava, because you're, you, you can't read Japanese, but like, so like, I knew that something was there, there was something more than what, what we were being told in the show, and I didn't quite understand it. In 2003, for whatever reason, um, I saw uh, pictures, or even clips, or whatever it is, from Ranger, Abba Ranger, excuse me, and it just blew my mind, like, oh my god. And then I looked, and I saw Oh my gosh, Ninja Steel was originally called Hurricanger, and Wild Force was originally called Gow Ranger, and this thing was going back all the way to 1975, with one exception, they've been going nonstop since 1975. And that continues to this day, I'll point out. And so, 2003 was a really big year for me. And I know I'm completely off topic, and I apologize, but like, it's not like I made any commentary on King Oja for the last 12 months, just saying. Um, but it just, it, my, my young, uh, let's see, how old was I? I was 21 years old. I was 21 years old when I discovered Super Sentai, and I'm 41 as I record this. Um, and it, 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 it was absolutely credible. It was revolutionary. And it was, I just had this itch, this need, I need to watch Super Sentai. Because now that I know about it, now I want to see it with my own eyes. Oh, I just want to see what the differences are. I had no idea at the time. I had no clue. And so, uh, 2023, despite my absence, my regretful absence from uh, unboxings and all kinds of things like that is an anniversary year for me personally. That's 20 years since I found out about Super Sentai. And 2024 is going to be the anniversary, 20th anniversary of the first Super Sentai series that I saw with my own eyes. The last Power Rangers I saw was SPD, which was in 2005. But... 2004 is when the Japanese equivalent, Deca Ranger, came out. Tokso Sentai Deca Ranger. So, so the weird thing about it was that in 2005, strange as this is going to sound, I was watching both Power Rangers SPD, Tokso Sentai Deca Ranger, and Moho Sentai Magi Ranger all at the same time. Two of those through fan subs, unofficial fan subs, and one of those on, uh, one of those on, on what was it, the local ABC affiliate or whatever, which was, was um, Disney, because they owned, they owned Power Rangers at the time. So, like, 2000, 2005 was a whirlwind year for a year, but 2003 is the anniversary of when I discovered it. And I almost on the spot switched, even though I'd never watched it, so, but, uh, 
yeah, get, getting back to it, the reason I brought that up is check up. You're basically going through what I went through in 2005. I'm watching two subtitled fan sub shows, and at the exact same time, I'm watching the current Power Rangers series, which was SPD at exactly the same time. So, yeah, I know I, I have a pretty darn, darn good idea what you're going through right now. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I haven't watched Power Rangers in a long time because... I mean, I don't. I know this is not a Power Rangers video, but yeah, I haven't liked the last season of Power Rangers. So Super Sentai has been like a good, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, a good option. Super Sentai is to me always has well, almost always, almost always. I got to put the disclaimer in there. Has almost always been more mature than Power Rangers by a long shot. Power Rangers will talk about it's good to share with friends. They'll talk about don't talk to strangers. They'll talk about uh, pay attention to your surroundings. I I was I'm just coincidentally, uh, right now I'm watching an, uh, I'm watching uh, Ninja Sentai Kaku Danger, which is MMPR Season 3, or Alien Rangers if you wish. Uh, I'm watching that right now, but uh, I, I just finished watching uh, Mirai Sentai Time Ranger for the first time all the way through. I had the DVDs from Shout Factory for like three, four years at this point, but I never, I didn't watch it all the way through. But anyways, watching the death of Time Fire was very interesting because like, I don't even know what happened in Time Force, the Power Rangers Time Force, which I never watched all the way through, by the way. But Time Fire, he got taken out like a bitch. Like the first time he's defending this little kid. Uh, when he's in his, his super suit or whatever it is, and then he gets taken down, he ends up in the hospital. But then, he in the second to last episode, second to last episode, and this is a 23-year spoiler, by the way, at this point, so whatever, so I'm not even going to bother at this point, um, time fires in the hospital, and then he gets out of the hospital to go chase his pet, those, those tiny little pet birds in a cage, and... What happens when his back is turned? Some random ass Zenit, which are, which are the grunts in the in Time Ranger, um, sees him crawling up the catwalk or whatever it is in order to get to his girls, uh, birds, girls, birds. Okay, his birds, and shoots him in the back, and he falls into a, a bunch of cardboard boxes, and that's how he dies. I'm like, wow, that's totally not how the Quantum Ranger got. Like, did the Quantum Ranger didn't even die? He just got, I, like, I've not even seen the finale for Time Force. We're like, what an amazing, an amazing contrast that in the year 2000, when the show was being made, actually it was 99 when the show was being made, technically, but when the show was being made, they're like, yeah, this is fine. We're going to kill a Ranger on screen for the second to last episode, and we're going to have him get shot in the back. No mercy. No, no second chance. No nothing. And I'm like, this is so refreshing compared to Power Rangers, where we're talking about sharing is caring and make certain you keep up with your homework. It's an entirely different culture. Super Sentai does not patronize the audience. Might have been GoGo5, I don't remember, where this one kid uh, is still reeling from the death of his grandfather. And, and is suddenly confronted with the ghost of his grandfather, which is being taken over, by, or the, the cor I'm sorry, the reanimated corpse of his dead grandfather. So his grandfather is a zombie, and the rangers come in and, and try to take down, down the monster, and this kid gets in the way, don't kill my grandfather, or at least don't kill the corpse of my grandfather. And I'm like, wow, that, that you know, this is an episode about, a, a, you know, eight or nine-year-old, Japanese boy having to confront the fact that his grandfather died like six months earlier and th there's the trauma of that alone which by the way I I know that trauma losing a grandparent I know what that feels like um, and here it is they're doing it in a kids show in Japan back in the late 90s and I'm like wow this is so good it's like yeah you can have fun with it but it's also like yeah, they, they don't beat around the bush in Super Sentai. They really, really don't. And that's one of the things I like about it. Well, ex ex except for uh, Shuriken Sentai and Ninja, which was bullshit, and I hated that show. But that's another topic for another time. Um, so it's funny that you mention uh, 
the Time Ranger dies in in in, in the Sentai counterpart. Uh, because for Power Rangers, they basically did the exact same thing, like the same thing that happens to a uh, Time Ranger. But the only difference is, like you already know, is like the guy in this case, his name is Eric. Uh, he didn't die; he survived. Uh, and just finding out that the counterpart of 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 Eric uh, died, it, it is really impressive because it's it's something that you did not expect. Because I don't know if you remember this. Uh, but when they made a special on Power Rangers Lost Galaxy with Power Rangers in space, uh, the Pink Ranger for uh, Lost Galaxy died, and then she get replaced by uh, the sister of the Red Ranger from Power Rangers in space. Yeah, that was uh, yeah that 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 was the uh, that was not Coron. That was oh, what was her name? The original. Oh, you're talking about like the uh, the, the real Pink Ranger? Yeah, the well, uh, well no. Country? No, 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 no. But, but you're, yeah, you're talking about where um, where Melody Perkins, uh, actress Melody Perkins, replaced. Uh, oh gosh, I'm blanking on the other actress's name. Forgive me, because she had developed cancer early in the filming of uh, Lost Galaxy. And here's 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 something. And, and, and really, that's yeah. She developed. It was leukemia. She developed leukemia. I'm wow! Totally blanking on her name right now, but it, but here's the weird thing about it: when Saban Entertainment at the time informed the press, okay, we're gonna with this new thing, we're that we're gonna be doing this thing, we're gonna be replacing one of our regular Rangers. One of the things that they told the media is, do not tell the children it's do not tell the world it's leukemia. Yes, we are replacing an one act actress with another one but do not tell them why do not tell them why and here we are 24 25 years after that happened and i cannot imagine today the press staying quiet about this at the request of the showrunner like i i cannot believe that that would happen today that would just be that would be an absolutely incredible thing. But yeah, the media respectfully kept quiet about her... Um, gosh, I need to look up what, what was her name. Um, Valerie Vernon. That was her name. Yeah, Valerie Vernon. She played uh, Kendrix. Um, boy, it's a good thing I had the wiki sitting right in front of me or else I'd have been in trouble. So, um, yeah, that was, that, that was not planned at all. And if anything, it uh, got in the way of... Uh, plans that they originally had they were going to go off in a completely different direction with lost galaxy but when uh, when miss vernon had to back out um it completely changed everything yeah i'm just I'm, I'm shocked like i did not know that to be honest uh but like the reason why i was bringing that up was because like okay they killed the character uh now I, we know why but then at the end of the lost galaxy they just bring her back like oh the power just revived me it's like what? Yeah, but even then, it was only in the very last episode where that happened, and she, 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 she was undergoing treatments at the time. And I want to say that the only reason she came back for that final episode is like she was just strong enough from treatments and and whatever it is that she was able to, you know, stand up straight and actually be able to do a little bit of acting. Uh, unfortunately, her career uh, after Lost Galaxy, obviously, um, she didn't do very much after that, but. Uh, yeah, that was absolutely incredible thing. But that's kind of the interesting thing. The reason I brought that up is because Super Sentai is willing to go to the areas where uh, they they will kill a ranger on character if need be, or on screen if they need be. They will do that. Okay. Um, sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. And I'm not just talking about a temporary death, like happened in uh, kind of the midway point of um, Gal Ranger where four of the six Gow Ranger get killed, you know. Uh, it's it's not the same thing as that. When you get Time Fire and Dragon Ranger, about a killer... I want to say there was another one that they killed recently. I can't think of which one it is. Oh, uh, uh, Black Condor. That was another one from Jetman. He was technically the first one to do that, so... But yeah, Super Sentai is much more mature. But it's still aimed at kids, and I, I really appreciate that. They're willing to they're willing to go to those places that are kind of awkward and uncomfortable for kids to talk about, 
but they can still do it in that kind of environment. It's kind of, it's kind of like Sesame Street, except less educational. I'm being prompted silently by Chekhov. He thinks that I'm wasting time. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you're absolutely right. We do need we need to go in with uh, Boom Boomger. I'm probably going to edit this up a little bit anyway, so yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, all right. Um, yeah, I'm I completely distracted, and I apologize for that. But uh, that's that's me making up for not talking about. Uh, uh, Osama Sentai King Oger last year. And so, again, I apologize for that. But yes, how about we do move on to Boon Boomger? To to toku. Tok tok Tokage? Uh, Bakuage. To what? Say that again? Bakuage Sentai. Bakuage, ba Bakuage Sentai Boon Boomger. Yep, we need to get into that. So, um, let's see, I think the first one I'm going to look at is. Uh, we're looking at two sites, or, yeah, we're going to be referencing primarily two sites, news.tokenation.com and jefusion.com, both sites that I've been using reliably for many, many, many years. They are usually the sites that I go to for uh, the latest on anything uh, uh, Super Sentai, or even Command Writer. I do Command Writer once in a while, not much, but I do. Um, so just to let you know, um, I was aware of... The magazine scans, I think I said this already, I was already aware of the magazine scans back in December, but I'm like, nope, 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 I'm not going to do magazine scans this time, I'm only going to do the official prints, and so that is why uh, I did not, uh, I didn't do a video until this point right now, because I was waiting for the official photographs, and um, yeah, that's why, that's why I put it off for as long as I did. So, um... I'm actually going to... Now, I've seen a couple of things. Like, for example, I know that the theme, the, the theme of the series is going to be uh, modern-day road vehicles. So we're, we're actually getting a return, a third return, I should point out, to, like, realistic road vehicles. Cars and trucks and Jeeps and, and all, all kinds of things like that. So I, the, I know about that. And I also know the base colors are red, blue, and pink. Which, by the way, is what we, what they did again in um, oh shoot, what was it called? Uh, Ryu Soldier. Soldier. No, Rio Soldier. That's where they did that. Red, blue, and pink is the starting team. But I also know they're starting with three and then adding on two more. I just don't, as of right now, I don't know what the colors are. Um, I also know that their uh, their helmets, their visors are tires. Their their wheels or whatever it is, but. I've been deliberately crossing my eyes and blurring my vision on purpose so I don't see details. So like, I'm aware of those few things, but that's as far as I've gone. Now, on the, on the other hand, Chekhov over here, he knows way more than I do as of right now. Okay, so he already knows most, if not all, this already. So, well, technically, I'm the one playing catch-up to him. And once again, Chekhov, thank you very much for participating in this video. Uh, you're welcome. Anytime. Coming boon. <laughs> yeah, it was really funny to be honest. The first time I read that. I like their shoes. That's nice. I yeah. like their shoes. It, it kind of reminds me to, to Sonic. <laughs> That's fine. This this I mean, it's been a while since we've done. Uh, like I said, it's been a while since we've had. Um, uh, well, a couple of things here. One, it's been a while since we've had you know street legal vehicles as the Mecca, so that's a that's a nice return. Um, oh, and then they also have shin guards. Hmm, okay, that's nice. Um, but I'll, it, oh, that's right. The other thing I knew is that there's going to be kind of a racing theme. Oh, I just noticed there's a, there's like a gauge or a dial on their chests. I didn't know about that, so that's new. Also, colored visors. It's kind of a strange one. They, they really stick out from their helmets too. That's that's strange the way they stick out like that. Yeah, I mean they they remind me to. Uh, I mean, people have made jokes about this, uh, but it remind it reminds me to all ranger. You know how each helmet represents like the symbol that each ranger represents. You and this. Good. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I was just gonna say like in this case it's similar because each each ranger has a different type of tire. Uh, yeah, yeah, from what I can tell, that's true, yeah. Um, 
looks like the tread patterns are also different as well. So that that's a nice touch they did. Uh, but yeah, you're right. You're right about the O Ranger stuff. By the way, I was not opposed to the. Uh, I actually like the O Ranger uh, designs, which for those of you who don't remember, that's Power Rangers Zio suits we're talking about. Also, when was the last time we had like this type of design where you can see like this uh, the mouth on 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 the helmet basically? Because I I love those type of design on on Sentai. I don't remember when was the last time that happened, to be honest. Because uh, I don't think Pat Ranger and Lupin Ranger did it. Uh, I think the last time was maybe... Uh, what is it called? Uh, Kosei Sentai Koseyer, I think it was. Yeah. Kosei Koseyer, I think. I don't think so. No, 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 no. I might say Lupin versus Pat Ranger. Mm, no. No. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Oh gosh, that, that's a good question. How long has it been since we've seen the mouth plate plates? Is it Q Ranger? No. Juoger? No. Wow, you're right. It actually has been a while since we've seen the faces. Yeah. That's why it's kind of it's kind of nostalgic for me. <laughs> yeah. It's also been a while, um, I'm not going to say Time Ranger necessarily, but it certainly has been a long time since the visors themselves were colored. This is very unusual. Oh, yeah. True. Yeah, and that, that was kind of the big deal about Time Ranger is they didn't have their visors where it looked like, you know, stylized arrows, um, which, you know, indicates the passage of time, blah, 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 blah. So that was uh, that was something that uh, was, was really strange. It's like, oh, my gosh, how can they do that? Um, but even though there are open spaces, you know, there, there are negative spaces between the color or between the different spokes of each wheel or each hubcap, um, it is unusual to see um, a colored visor. Tokyo Drew doesn't. I'm still used. To, you, 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 you've got me hooked on something here now, Chekhov. It's like, oh, when was the last time they had visible mouths? I'm assuming go say here. It's the only thing that comes to my mind right now. Because I know for Go Kyer and Go Busters, I know they didn't do it. So yeah, based on my memory, I think Go Figure is the last one, to be honest. Well, I just went through uh, I just went through the list, and you know what? I think you're right. Uh, Go Sager might very well be the last time where they had actual you know, lips and nose and, and chin showing. Wow. Yeah. They didn't do it in Zenkaiger. They didn't do it in Don Brothers. They didn't do it in King Oger. I mean, you could technically cheat a little bit with uh, Maggi, uh, Magini. Magino, I think it was how she was called. Like the Pink Ranger. Uh, but she's a robot, so, you know, it, it makes sense. She has the plate. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I can agree with that. Yeah. Huh. How about that? And I'm also seeing, moving on a little bit here, I'm also seeing that we have uh, both wrist changers. Yes! And we also have belt buckles again. Which, I like that. Um, that's actually something they did with, uh, I think they also did that with Car Ranger, where their belt buckles are shaped like, uh, they're shaped like seat belts. So whatever that red button is on the side there, it's deliberately designed to look like a belt buckle. The other thing I'm just now noticing is the Pink Ranger does not have a skirt. That's nice. I mean, it's it's not. Hey, the shit done that was scary. Yeah. But it's like, oh, you know what? They they don't. It's been a really really long time since Super Sentai didn't have a female ranger with a skirt on them. And I'm not referring to what uh, the Dino Fury Green Ranger did back in 2023. That's not at all. Or was it 22? It's 23. Um, I'm not talking about that incident. Um, I'm talking about like the last time that they that they didn't have a skirt. And again, I'm not going to include Zenkaiger in this because, well, she, uh, Zenkai or Magine, she kind of. Magine, hmm? yeah, something like that. No, no, you, you said it right. You said it right. Yeah, so Magine kind of has has a skirt, but that doesn't really count. But I'm kind of struggling off the top of my head when the last time was that. Oh wait, 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 yeah. 
actually, uh, King Oger didn't use skirts, so, so yeah. Oh, King Oger. See, I told you, folks, I I haven't watched uh, King Oger, so I didn't I didn't realize that. So yeah. there you go. Okay, so King Oger, no no skirts. Yeah, that's pretty refreshing, to be honest. I actually like the design, and I just noticed now that what you were saying, like basically their buckles are just tip belts, <laughs> literally. <laughs> just I didn't even knew that. Oh boy, that was cool. But but the, just this one picture alone, wrist changers. Yes. I like that. I appreciate that. And the car that's to the left of the Red Ranger, like, wow. I mean, I assume that's one of the Mecha, but it'd also be easy to assume that it's not. So it's kind of strange. Um, all I'm going to say is a surprise. <laughs> a surprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> With its main themes being cars and creation. Creation. Well, you will get surprised when you see the other pictures. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so let's see, that was on the 26th, and that was on the 25th, so I'm going to stick with, uh, I think I'm going to stick with Toku Nation now. First, ba Bakua Bakuage Sentai Boom Boom Jer magazine scans released online. Yep. Go to uh, December 25th now, the next one. And all that this is is just uh, oh yeah, look at that magazine scans. Yay. Yep. I like that they put the effort forward to change the tread pattern on each ranger. That's that's nice. I don't know if you noticed, but like if you if you see the, their backs, at least in the first picture of the magazine, you can see there's something in their backs. Can, can you get what that is? Well, they have wheels on the on their shoulder blades. I'm just now looking at the second yep. picture. On the, wow. They, why on earth are they have wheels? You know, it's funny you mention that because... Wait. And then they have wheels on their ankle. What the crap? Yep. They have wheels also on their ankles. <laughs> and, and, the, and the greatest thing is like, it's not like a random design. It's like the same design you see in their helmet is the same one you're going to see in each tire. Which is fucking amazing. That, that, that's okay. That's fine. But I'm like... Huh... You know, it, it's funny you mention that because one thing that I've noticed over the decades with uh, Super Sentai and by extension Power Rangers, one of the things I've noticed is that the back of their power suits or whatever, the back of their armor is usually very under detailed. It's like whatever patterns they have on the front of their on the front of their shirts, on the front of their pants, usually does not get repeated on the back. And that's something that's always bothered me. So I'm really... Re now, once in a great while, you'll get, like, a vest of some kind, or you'll get some sort of a, um, a special collar that, you know, wraps around the top of their shoulders or something like that, and then it wraps around the back. That's not what I'm talking about. So, such as, like, uh, with Dragon Ranger, you know, MMPR Green Ranger. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, like, the rangers in general usually the back of their outfits are not uh they don't have any particular pattern or rather they don't have a continuation of the patterns on the front on onto the back that's a strange thing so like by putting wheels there and yes there are exceptions for example with um uh uh, uh zenkaiger um obviously their outfits were quite detailed so that that doesn't matter quite so much but in terms of like you know the, the the lycra that they use the lycra patterns or whatever it is like this is very unusual i'm i'm genuinely surprised i'm also noticing that i'm sorry to interrupt the other thing i'm noticing right now ooh, i like that gun what is that um i'm also noticing that their suits have very little of their core color they're white they're gray they've got black and they've got other things but like it's just one arm part of a shoulder or part of part of their chest and shoulder and then the entirety of the helmet is the color but they're not use it, it's not the whole suit that's red or the whole suit that's pink it's part of it i also yeah. like it when they do that it kind of reminds me a little bit to uh uh SPD or Decaranger, you could say. Because uh, it is something similar, at least. 
Yeah, that's uh-huh. true. yeah, that's true. Where where it's kind of off center, whatever it is. The other time they did it was um, Ryu Soldier. That's another. T- that's in case where where in that case it was like an entire arm would get armored up with the the specific feature that uh, or the specific uh, oh what, was, what were they called the Ryu Souls. The specific Ryu soul that they were using at the time would change one arm. But then, you know, certain power ups, they'd get the opposite arm covered up, or they'd get both arms covered up. And I'm like, you know what? At the time, I was like, okay. I, it, it's, it's unusual to have it asymmetrical, but I'm like, yeah, okay, all right, I can, I can live with that. You know, I'm noticing something now. Uh, I don't know if you maybe have noticed that, but this is something new for this type of uh, design. So. I want you to look at their gloves. Look at their gloves. They've got a, a, a panel in the back of one, but not the other. Okay. And then one is the color of, you know, the individual ranger, and the other one is white, which is unique, to be honest, because usually they are white, you know what I mean? Uh, so uh, this is unique. Yeah, I can, I can see that happening. At least for what I'm used to, you know. Boone Red is a positive hero with a passionate heart and a strong competitive side, okay? Boone Blue is a reliable fighter whose skills increase as he faces new challenges. Well, I'd like to think that's true of all of them. Boone Pink is perpetually curious and energized with a determination to boost everyone's morale. So she's a cheerleader. Lovely. <laughs> The Boon Moonger will face off against the evil group Hashi, Hashi, Hashiran, Hashiran, which translates to Street Racers. Hmm. Two pieces of Boon Boonger's arsenal are on display in the scans. The Boon Boon, Boon Boom Changer, wrist mounted attention device, yes! and the Boon <laughs> Boom Handle, a wheel shaped weapon with gun and rod configurations, which, I'll be honest, I'm not opposed to that. Kind of looks like a stopwatch a little bit. Uh, yeah, there's a video that was released that gives you more details about the Henshin device if you're interested in watching it later. Uh, but, but yeah, uh, it is a pretty interesting uh, Henshin device. Oh, I haven't looked at the Henshin device. I'm looking at the, uh, what they call it? The Boom Boom Handle. That's what I'm looking at right now. Speaking oh. of the Boom Boom Handle, it's a f- amusing name, by the way, I noticed <laughs> that where the Rangers grab onto it changes between gun mode and rod mode. It's an interesting choice. I do not believe that they're going to be uh, combining this weapon with anything else. I doubt that's going to happen. They don't do that nearly as much um... as they used to. Do you care about spoilers? <laughs> yeah, actually, I do. So, all right, yeah, I, I just stepped in it, folks. So you heard it here. Hmm. Okay. And now move on to the Robo. Wait, let me double check J E Fusion. Boom boom. Teaser. Actually, so I'm gonna go to J E Fusion. Teaser trailer. Hmm. Yes, the they released a trailer. For uh, Boom Boonger. Almost three minutes long. Wow. Oh, that's the t- no, never mind. That's the teaser. Never mind. Never mind. So they released two videos. They released a teaser, which is three minutes long, and then they released the trailer, which is like maybe thirty seconds long. Okay. Well, the one I'm the one I see right now is just shy of three minutes. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, so the other Rangers are orange and black. Hmm. Yep. And they have, uh, well, I'm not looking at it in detail right now, but they, well, yes, I am. Who am I kidding? Um, they have, uh, their outfits are c- close to the same, but they're, um, actually, I like orange. I'm guessing it's called Boone Orange. By the way, um, Orange Ranger. Not green, not. Yellow. Uh, yellow but orange that's an interesting choice yeah but on the other hand um what am i talking about just last year in 2023 with king oger 
we didn't have a pink ranger we had a um purple violet or purple yeah which was wow that was surprising you know but hey it, it works so why not and also they don't have a henshin device on their left wrist i wonder if that has something to do with their shoulders shoulder armor uh no so so they have their own motif which i think you read that on the uh the description of bakwaga sentai bubunjer mm -hmm. where they tell you they're gonna be with cars and construction and stuff so they have different motifs and yeah okay the version so... they buy were a little bit different okay so obviously folks i'm not going to be able to watch or i'm not going to be able to show you the video or the the you know the three minute video in this video i can't do that for copyright reasons but what you will what you will get is you're going to hear me reacting to it responding to it wow so much so much uh wow Bunch of little. I, I guess they were inspired by uh, the 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 success of the insects for um, uh, uh, King Oger, where they had a bunch of little insects. Little yeah. insects, and then they had some other you know big insects, and then they have a central big one. Now I kind of sort of. I mean, I've been hearing that uh, it's going to be kind of a, and I think it came from you. It's going to be kind of a. Um, Lupin Kaiser, Pat Kaiser type scenario, and that tells me that 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 hints at me that there's going to be a uh, kind of a big central mecha, and then have a bunch of little ones attached to the outside. But based on what I'm seeing here, it's like, oh yeah, that's what they're doing. So yeah, so so the the trailer, like you saw, is basically the main robot, and then the other ones are just like auxiliary mechs that you can just attach. Uh, and how you can see in the in the video, like the main formation, it's pretty much similar to like the root soldier formation. Mm -hmm. So so yeah. There was a, um, oh, I'm I'm struggling to remember what it was. There was a, a a year of of transformers, like actual brand name transformers, in the 2000 aughts, where I'm trying to remember what they were called. Core power core combiners. That's what they were called power core combiners where it was a deluxe class robo that or or you know deluxe class bot and then it had scout class vehicles that did not become individual robos they were just drones that would attach as limbs or something like that so i'm very much getting a feeling of that off of off of just this one video that i just saw so if you ever get the chance to look up uh, power core combiners then you'll You'll know what I'm talking about. I actually had one of those at one point. What was that called? Let me look it up. Ah, here it is. Uh, Autobot Double Clutch with the Rally Bots. That's what he was called. Double Clutch. Uh, Autobot Double Clutch is a character making his debut in the Power Core Combiner storyline. No information is available on him except on the back of his packaging. Yeah, that's the one that I had. And uh, it was... Uh, it, it seemed to be kind of the best of them all. Uh, that's where I got that particular one. But then when you combine it, it was like they were they were playing around with automorph at the time. So um, yeah, there was there was automorph in the limbs, and sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. I kind of picked the one that seemed to work the best, but ultimately I didn't like it very much, and I sold this. So I I don't even have double clutch anymore. But yeah, anyways, I'm getting this uh, that the whole uh, power core combiner vibe with the robo here. So what's the robo call it? Uh, 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 uh. Boon Boomger is a vehicle-based series, and the centerpiece of the vehicle fleet is line is the Boon Boom Trailer, large car carrier used by Boon Red. The Boon Boomgers will need to combine three vehicles to form a mecha, uh, for a mecha form. The default configuration sees trailer combined with Boon Boom Wagon and Boon Boom Off-Road. Together they create Boon Boom Robo. Boon Boom, Boon Boomger Robo. I think they could have come up a different thing. Newcomers Boone Black and Boone Orange bring their own vehicles to the set. To their, their own vehicle sets. Pato Car 1 and 2. Pato Car, really? All right. Our police duo assigned to Boone Black, uh, which becomes the Boone Boom Jerobo Police. Uh, 
boom 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 shovel and boom boom dozer shovel doza belong to boom boom or boon orange to activate boom boom jer robo builder another set of vehicles is identified in these early previews boom boom classic and boom boom racing cars can be created to can create the boom boom jer robo knight formation which belongs to the red ranger under which red boom boom So I'm looking at the first. I'm just going through these one at a time from, you know, top left to, to bottom right. So got the shovel and I think this is dozer. Yeah, shovel and dozer. This is something that you probably already noticed. But for each configuration, you're going to need two individual vehicles. Like, you're not going to be good only with one. You need two vehicles to do the individual configuration. Yeah. Which one of, one of the vehicles is... It's, the head, uh, because yeah, we're doing a head swap gimmick this time, and the other one is going to be the weapon. Hmm. Yeah, it's 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 a head swap. That's interesting. Been a long time since I've done that. I think the uh, real shoulder was the last time they did it. At least the head swap. Yeah, but the head swaps weren't necessarily a power up per se. It came more from the uh Oh shoot, what were they called? They weren't called Ryu Souls. They were called what were you guys called again? Uh I don't remember what they were called. The 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 auxiliary mecha uh were what provided the power, not the helmet itself. So like the helmet providing the power, that's different. But I kinda like this idea of it's strange how I'm I'm getting a Kira Mazin feel off of this where like same. <laughs> no, I'm saying I, I I feel I have the same feeling. It just gave me some Kira Major feelings and also some Pad Ranger, based on Looping Ranger, uh, feeling too. Uh, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Oh, that's kind of nice. As you guys know, Ava has done all the videos for Pad Ranger versus Looping Ranger, so get ready for this. A new saga has begun. <laughs> you speak too soon. Uh, actually, there was one, and, and I've, I've, I, I alluded to it at the time. There's a, there actually was one final uh, Lupat vi catch-up video that I was planning to do. I filmed about part way through it, and then uh, I just stopped. So I can't remember why I stopped, but I did that in early 2022 is when I did the Lupat catch-up. I just never publish the final video, which would have been my overall conclusion to um, all uh, Lupat footage that I'd made at that point, but I, it would have been like random combinations of stuff that I uh, that I came up with on my own that was not canon. There was going to be a bunch of stuff like that, but and then there was going to be final conclusion. Okay, yeah, I like this, and I, I don't like that, and I regret getting this, and I do enjoy getting this, so it was going to be a bunch of stuff like that, um, but... Unfortunately, I never finished it, so... Uh, oh, yeah, by the way, there was one more video. Oh! I like this one. I think it's the the, the police combined front or whatever it is. Um, the, the kind of SWAT vehicle becomes two separate guns, which I like. And then the, uh, the, the police car becomes the helmet. So I approve of that. And they also combined with uh, the trailer. Uh, huh. They do combine that. that. That's weird. Why is that there and I don't see it? Oh, there it is. I wonder if they're trying to give the Boom Boom Jer Robo uh, kind of a cape. Like I said. Oh, okay. There's the main. Boy, that's kind of hollow. Hollow bits on the arms there. Nah, and the the robo has irises. <laughs> Been a while since they've done that. There's no elbows. Yep, there is sadly no articulation. Huh. Well, so, so I we're going back. Well, 
that's not strictly so because it looks like the hips and the knees should be able to articulate. So I'll disagree with you there, but uh, huh? But I, I, uh, I yeah, I'm just gonna say why. <laughs> well, 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 stop teasing me, check up. I hate it when you do that. Um, check up, son. Don't tease me. So. Uh, <laughs> This is a scenario. The other thing I'm noticing is these are a bit on the smaller side. I think these mecha, these these are going to be some of the smaller ones, one of the, one of the smaller lineups. But hey, but let me ask you this: uh, Have you seen the uh, so from Curiousers? They uh, re-released the main mech. I don't know if you know about that. Oh, Curiouser, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah. Oh, what were you called? Cure Eugen. Cure Eugen! So, so if you see the Pink Ranger and the Blue Ranger for, for that re-release, they're pretty much the same size as these vehicles. They're small. They're small? Yep, they are small. Like, I have seen the comparisons and stuff, and yeah, they are the same size, basically. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm noticing that, too. And the, the reason why I'm thinking it is because I'm looking at the size of the screw holes on uh, the trailer. And then I'm also noticing the wheels on the blue and pink vehicles. They're held together. They, they're they they're not, I don't know what to call it, but they don't use, um, they're not using metal shafts to connect the wheels. They're just taking, taking the wheels and just snapping over the top, and that's it. That means a lot of those wheels are not going to turn very well. Also, I don't know if you have noticed, but like the the main mech, at least if you see the main head, it has like a, a tire. Yeah, a tire in the head. Yeah. Yeah, and and something that I the first time when I saw this, the, the thing that I was uh, hoping the most is that that tire actually was work. You know what I mean? As a real tire, and was part of the actual uh, mech. I mean, you know, like. The trailer in this case, and thankfully, actually, that's the case. What so that? it's not a tire that appeared out of nowhere. It's a tire that's actually part of the uh, uh, the trailer, actually. And the head has a, like some transformation, you know, to to hide it basically, which I really appreciate. Oh, that's right, because the head is different with each one. Hmm, huh, interesting. It's kind of weird the way I'm, I'm looking at the way that the pink vehicle is attached to the arm and it comes across as a giant hand or a giant, well, yeah, as a giant what? hand. But here's the weird part. The trailer's red arm does not wear the pink vehicle like a glove. It's attached to the outside of the forearm. It's not a case of the red arm goes inside of the pink vehicle and likewise does not go inside of the blue vehicle. Instead, it's forearm pieces which have panels that fold over. Hmm. Yeah, that was one of the things that told me off about this robot. But, you know, after time passed by, it grew on me, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hmm. Let's see, should I get into this now or oh going on to the next one? Oh that's a I wonder what they're planning to do with the trailer where the trailer deploys uh the the, the, the like the action feature or whatever it is for each one. The one thing I'm hoping for from from this mech, and you might disagree with me, is that at the end of the of the season, they actually make like a big robot, kind of like how we how they did with uh, Don Brothers and uh, Kira. I'm uh, not Kira Major. Uh, do not do what Kira Major did. <laughs> and King Oger. King Oger, yeah. Also, I'm just now noticing. I think I could be wrong about this, but I think the. Uh, well, let's see. Let me find another. Oh, it's facing downwards. Mm. I think that the ankles tilt as part of the transformation. They're not just molded in that shape. I think they might have a tilt to them. 
I can't say that I'm... It's nice to see that they... You know, I, I, I think they've... I think they're... And by they, I mean Bandai and Toei and Plex are experimenting with the Boom Boom Jer Robo in terms of, okay, we did Don Onitaijin, and then we did King Oja, and both of those had significant amounts of articulation. They had wrist articulation, they had waist articulation for the most part, they had neck articulation for the most part. You could put them into a lot of different poses, which was the gimmick of each of those, okay? This, here it is, the Boon Boon Jer Robo feels like, okay, now that we know that the audience likes it, and we've, you know, we, we played around with articulation, this feels like, okay, now that we know how to do it, let's deliberately go, or let's deliberately drop down and see how little the audience is willing to accept before they reject it and say, okay, yeah, we want articulation back. This feels like an experiment because there's the ankles are not articulated. I was mistaken earlier, so they're not articulated. The elbows are not articulated, and it looks like, and, and for the particular gimmick of this particular robo, the heads do not turn. They don't look side to side or up and down. I think it's fairly confident for me to say that right now. So what that's telling me right, and I'm, I'm, I'm going meta. I'm trying to put myself in Bandai and Plex and Toei's heads right now, or at least Bandai and Plex's heads. Right now, I'm thinking okay, they know how to do articulation and do it very well. Okay, they did it really well. Um, Don Oni Taijin was revolutionary. It was an incredible thing. And then, if anything, I would say that um, King Oja dialed it up a notch. Okay. Uh, you know, which was even more fan-freaking-tastic, and all you have to do is look at God King Oja to know how that thing turned out. But yeah. this, no elbows, no ankles, and it's questionable at this point whether, actually, I don't think it has waist articulation, and it doesn't have a neck. So this, to me, says they're dialing it down on purpose. Okay, we know what the audience likes, but now we need to simplify it a little bit. Let's see how simple can we get before they start crying again, before they start protesting. And that's what this feels like. This feels experimental to me. Does that sound about right to you or, or let me rephrase what is your do you have any anything to add about that uh check um not really to be honest uh i think you have spot it on to be honest uh i think that's what they're doing here the other thing though is they've got kibble sitting on the back of the boom boom robo so that's eh. which that's all the cables that you should appreciate because it basically yeah. Yeah, so, ties to the, the, uh, the robot, basically, you could say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be fair, Super Sentai is fairly good at policing its own kibble. It's it's fairly good at doing that. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be too mad. And it's 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 a little stylistic. It's 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 not necessarily wings. It's not necessarily. Um, uh, like rocket boosters or something like that. It's actually a little more of a... I almost want to say it's like a cape or a... Um, what can I call it? A cape or a coattails. That's what I was looking for, coattails. Or maybe like a, a scarf. Maybe they're playing it off as a scarf. I'm not entirely certain. Huh... Interesting. I can't say I'm not a ma I'm not I'm not angry about this. It it it, it does how do I say this? It's not I, I can't really say it's what I was expecting or not what I was expecting. I knew it was gonna be street legal racers, but um I didn't think it would be 
I thought it was going to be a big blocky thing. I didn't know that they were going to have a single robo that sits in the center and that's it. Although it does beg the question if uh, Boon Boon Robo uh, can operate without any of these uh, other uh, auxiliaries on the outside. I wonder if um, I've got a mode built in for that or not. I'm, so if you, I think you can do that. It just wouldn't be very interesting. So if you go again to the uh, the first video you were watching, at the end they show uh, the robot without any uh, auxiliary mechs. So based on that video, yeah, pretty much we can work individual. So we basically have in our hands again uh, uh, Tiramigo. <laughs> We'll call it, I guess. <laughs> that's it. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. The, 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 uh, um, uh, not, not care, mate. Um, uh, Ryu, Ryu Soul, or Ryu. Oh, shoot. What do you call it? Ryu, uh, Kishi Ryu Jin. Kishi Ryu Jin. Or, no, I'm sorry. It's called Kishi Ryu L. The, the repaint that I have is Kishi Ryu Jin. So, no, you're, you're absolutely correct. Correct. This feels like Kishi Ryu O. I couldn't I couldn't put my hand on or I couldn't put my finger on it but yeah you're right. This is Kishi Ryuo again. And which uh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say I don't know if you know it but the way it attached is pretty much similar to uh what do you call Tokyo the the way those uh, Minimax uh, attach for uh the morpher. So it has a similar connection for not saying the same uh same thing that happens with Pat Ranger versus Lupin Ranger. So yeah, that's how they interact with the mech. Oh, you're talking about reader rails. I remember reader rails. Those were... Which I, I think that's what they're called nowadays. We call them real reader rails. Just don't see... Because uh, I want to see if they have the pictures of... What did you call it? The uh, the Henshin device? Uh, yeah, I haven't looked yet to see if there are any... Uh, um, anything from the Henshin device. Although, well, no, that's not true. There's... Uh, JE Fusion has a uh, Henshin series review video, but do they have do they have pictures of the Henshin device and stuff? Uh, no, they don't. The only the only thing they have is is just basically the video. So the only image they have is just basically the thumbnail for the video that Bandai released. <laughs> huh, that's strange. They usually uh, they're usually on top of that. That's strange. Yeah, because Bandai basically just did you know. A, uh, a review for both the uh, ancient device and the weapon. Okay. Because I don't know if you knew, but I'm just going to mention this. It's going to be, you could say, a spoiler. Spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, the ancient device can interact with the uh, with the weapon. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, same thing with each uh, individual uh, car and also with the Boom Boom robot. It has the same connection. Yeah, it's probably along the underside that we're not able to see on these right now. So. Yeah, because you can take the uh, morpher from the uh, what do you call it? Uh, the the wreath uh, thing, because it's like a, a black piece. It's kind of similar to. Uh, uh, I don't know what other ancient device you were able to remove it from the wreath, like from the. Uh, the thing that grabbed it in your wrist, I forget what it was called. But, but yeah, it, 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 yeah, no, I just don't know how it's called. But, but yeah, just wish I could find more pictures. Yeah, I'm surprised there aren't more. Uh, at, at at this stage, I mean, we're we're less than a month out. I'm surprised that they haven't. Yeah, actually, yeah, we're one month out to to the day as of recording. We're one month out from when the. Uh, when the series has come out, so I'm surprised they don't have the henshin device and the weapon out yet, or the official pictures and stuff for that out yet. That's hmm. also the uh, the weapon has its own electronics, same with the henshin device. Like I said, they can interact with each other as well. Uh, yeah, that's no surprise. That doesn't that doesn't surprise me. Also, I want to uh, point something out. Uh, I don't know if you noticed that, but if you go again back to the weapon and you look the details of the weapon, you might notice two things. Or at least one. That, I mean, it's basically the same thing. The engine device is a stopwatch. <laughs> it's a junk I watch, basically. <laughs> oh, they, oh, um, 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 oh, oh, I know what you're talking about. Um, I just saw the, just a few seconds. Of, 
uh, it's like it's like the Excellular from uh, oh yeah uh, Bokinger, which I yeah, have, just... which is which is uh, for the record my absolute favorite uh, cell phone. Oh yeah, I, I love that one. Yeah, so it's the exact same thing where you take it off and then you slide it down your arm, and there's a little there's a little dial on the underside that makes it turn. That's well, before cool. you do that, you need to press the uh, the accelerator because I don't know if you can see it on the side. So you need to press it three times, and then you do the, uh, you know, the movement. Mm -hmm. uh, but also for the weapon, the thing I was pointing out with the weapon is like, if you see that it's uh, gun mode, if if you see the part where uh, the fire is supposed to come out, the shape is basically a shape of what do you call this? Like, because I know the name is not screw. I I forget what was the name, but like. He has this shape for like uh, the thing that goes in the car that you use to like remove the tire. Oh, um, uh, a lug nut or something like that? Or not a lug nut. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And, and also the weapon mode, like, you know, the sword mode, if you look at the tip, it's basically a screwdriver. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that early on. Yeah, I saw that. I recognize that. Yeah. So yeah, so I find that really interesting that they're going that way. Like, I really appreciate that. Oh sure, yeah. And also, I don't know if you remember this, but the last time we had like a, a weapon that was at least related to uh, the steering wheel of a car uh, was with uh, Gold Busters, the Gold and, and Silver Rangers. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Huh, their henching device is a, uh, it's a stop. Okay, watch. It's a stopwatch combined with, um, some sort of a, a, a dial or something. Huh. And, and one last thing. Mm. So, every time you press the pedal, the little uh, arm thing that indi indicates the speed goes up. Oh yeah. Depending on how how you like how far you press the, uh, the accelerator. Oh, there's a single light on the top there. They they did not show that particularly well. Hmm. Oh yeah, they have a light there. Wait. So Annie how does this? Okay. So then, how does this interact with? Uh... Uh, interact with the vehicles. Uh, so, like I said, like I don't know if you can see from the picture, but like it's on like a black base, so you can just basically remove the morpher from that black plastic thing, and then on the bottom, he has the reader, which is used to attach to the mech and the uh, the weapon. Hmm. I wouldn't think that there would be enough room for that. Although maybe I haven't gotten far enough into the video yet, so. Well, when you have time, just go and watch the uh, review for both uh, the mech and the uh, engine device and weapon. Mm -hmm. Wait, the vehicle or the 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 steering wheel, uh, whatever it is. It's not, well, yeah, it is a steering wheel that looks like it interacts with the vehicle, or unless the engine device goes in the center of that, which I haven't seen yet. You're absolutely right. Oh, I see what they're talking about. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying about the, the kind of the ratcheting position or ratcheting tool on the end there, whatever it is. They, the video makes a reference to a, um, what's that thing called where you remove the, the lug nuts from the side of a, uh, side of a, uh, a race car's wheel. So that's, eh, okay. All right. This is not going to be. I'm not like I'm not opposed to the uh, to the, the the weapon. I'm not opposed to it. But, oh, does it spring out? Please tell me it springs out. Darn! I was hoping the thing the the blades or the rod would stick out. Does it telescope? No, yeah. It's not. Oh wait, no, never mind. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. Oh, the henching device does go in the center of the wheel. Okay. Yep. I'm not. I'm not like watching this video from beginning to end. I'm actually skipping ahead on purpose. So, okay, all right, it does go to the center. 
that's probably how um, oh it looks like it has a motion sensor in it that's nice oh they're promoting another uh, oh they're promoting well, another vehicle here that was that was not shown previously oh that might be like the movie exclusive or a limited edition or something like that that's the car that was uh, wait is that right is that the car that was um, on the poster yeah that looks like the car that was on the poster yeah, I think it's that one. So they're all doing that one, and then also another one that is basically a repaint. Uh, yeah. Oh no! They okay. They don't attach to the uh, the the black section that goes on your wrist. They attach to the underside of the hinging device. That's what they do. Oh, that's that's crappy. What it turns into. So it looks like all these yeah, things are going to be released on uh, May 2nd. That's when things kick off. Yeah, I'm going to see if I can pre-order it, to be honest. I, I, I'm I, really interested. Mm -hmm. This is going to be the first time I get like a Henshin device. I've never had got a Henshin device in my life. Well, I will say the, the ones from the last few years have been a bit on the disappointing side. So, yeah, I mean, this could be something interesting. I, I don't think this is a bad place to start. If you're talking about hanging devices and, and role play, or just role play period, this isn't a bad place, I don't think, to start. Going back to the, uh, whatchamacallit, I'm going back to the, um, all the boom boom vehicles, or whatever they're called. I don't know what they're called, but uh, some of these are not bad. Really, it's kind of the core robot, the boom boom jer, it's boom boom jer robots. Excuse me, some of the hiccups that, uh, I'm kind of like, Eh, it's it's okay. I'm not. I I think like if any objection could be made, it's like the 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 arms, the red part of the arms are too thin. They're they're, they're a little little underwhelming compared to your average Super Sentai Robo. So that can be an issue. <clears throat> but for the most part, oh hello, what are you? So I just I just now noticed something about and I, and I don't know what the uh, although I suppose I could click and find out let's see what do you find out I think it's called boon boon Robo night formation if you can pick that one out oh uh, that one was on the uh, the picture we were looking at before it's it's the one of the two classic cars. One's kind of a hot pink, and or one's kind of a yeah. Polish pink. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm looking at that one, at the Boon Boom Jer Robo Knight formation, and I'm looking at the way that the red colored vehicle drapes over the one shoulder. <clears throat> what I'm wondering about. I shouldn't have to, like, check up. I should not have to wonder about this. this. This should not be a problem, but apparently it is. I'm getting another Kiramazin vibe, except this time it's not a good vibe. Yep. Yep. I, I know. Yeah, you know exactly <laughs> what I'm going to say. It's, where, where the, it's it's not where the green vehicle was hanging over the right shoulder, and then, or the, the uh, what were you called? Uh, I don't remember what the green vehicle uh, was called. Shovelo? Mach. Machin Mach. That's what it was. Machin Mach hangs over... No, was it Mach? Yeah, Machin Mach is the green one, right? I don't remember the name, but I know yeah. I, I know people who get it, you know. Yeah, okay, so Machin yeah. Mach hangs over the right shoulder, and what, which, which at the time I said, that, okay, that's fine. I mean, it's a nice stylistic choice. I'm not, I'm not opposed to it. But what made it really weird was that the shoulder joint, where the shoulder joint was located on uh, Machin Fire was very very it was off center and it meant that the arm bent at a very weird angle very strange way um when i did my unboxing for the cure mason in 2021 because you know I, I put it off and put it off until the year after it came out um when i got that i noted that shovelo was centered properly on the shoulder but machin fires uh, ladder, extending ladder section or whatever is the turret, I guess, that becomes the right arm was off-center and it was really, really bothering me. The other thing I'm thinking of is uh, 
King Express, which, oh my god, that thing was a mess, and I just, oh god. Uh, I, and, and by the way, I, I still don't have one at this point. But the thing about King Express that just really, the thing that keeps me away from it, the thing, is that neither shoulder on King Express could raise to 90 degrees forward. In other words, it could not wield any weapons of it. Excuse me, it could not wield any weapons of its own. The shoulders could only ever go to 45 degrees because if the uh, shoulders go out to 90 degrees forward, what ends up happening is that it would literally push the, on the chest armor and the head and the chest armor would literally pop off the figure, which in my opinion, very, very fucking badly engineered. I did not like that at all. I'm, I have to ask, I have to wonder if that is going to happen here. Every time I see on the Boom Boom Jerobo, every time I see something draped over one of the shoulders, that particular shoulder is straight down. And that worries me. That concerns me. I can actually me. tell you. What? So, uh, I'm, no, I'm saying I can actually tell you. Uh, okay. So it, it, it's not going to affect anything because that part is apart from the arm. Like the arms are just this, the, the red part, the, like the red plastic thing is. They are like in a different part. So they're not going to get in your way. At least you're not going to be able to do. Uh, even without it, you're not going to be able to do 360 because of the, the white plastic that is on top. No, I'm not. I, I, yeah, obviously this cannot. This cannot do a shoulder rotation of 360 degrees. That's that. Nope, that's not even in my mind. I'm just. I mean, King Express left a mark on my expectations for all Super Sentai Robos going forward. And then you know, two years later, we got done on a Titan. Go fig. Um, <laughs> but anyways, what concerns me is that the shoulder articulation is being sacrificed to have something draping over one shoulder. I think that uh, Boon Boon Jerobo Knight, if I remember correctly, I think what they're trying to do there is have it be like a racing scarf that's kind of flowing in the wind off to one side. I think that's what they're trying to do with it. So like you've got a sword on one side and then you've got a racing scarf on the opposite side. Is that... Because just, just because of the way the way it is shaped... It, it, and also where it's located doesn't look like it's functioning as a, a shoulder shield or an arm shield or something like that. It looks instead. It also does not look like a dedicated claw or some other kinds of slashing weapon. It's like I wonder if this is a cape or an over the shoulder or off shoulder uh, cape of some kind. Does that? Sound you know, right? I don't. I don't know what it is to be honest. All, all I know is that is the favorite of people so. So this combination is one of the favorites. So I feel like this was going to be one of the two uh, auxiliary makes that was going to be really hard to find. Hmm. That's how I feel like. I might be wrong, but that's how I feel like. Because people say they like this one, specifically. I like the police version. I like, uh, I like that one. What's, what's this one called? Uh, it is called... Yeah, Boom Boom Robo Police. Yeah, like that's not bad. Oh yeah, no, that one is great too. It's got it's got dual pistols. That's great. I love that. <laughs> also, detail that they don't show you here, uh, but they did at least in the video when I watch it. It's like I don't know if you can see the panels that are in front of the arms, like the ones that have the, the like the green and uh, pink color. Mm -hmm. Those can be moved, like. Yeah, to, I saw uh, that. yeah. Um, it was, okay, okay. That was either part of transformation, or that allows for shoulder armor that that kind of flexes. It's like skirt armor, except it's covering the shoulders. Which, hey, to be fair, I'm not that. That's fine. I've I've got no problem there. So. Just appreciate it can be moved. You know, yes. Mm. I, I like to be able to put the arms like. Uh, like to move the arms more. You know what I mean be able to move them more. At least 90 degrees, I guess. Mm -hmm. I can't say for certain whether I'm going to... I'm not... I've tried saying this a couple of times now, but now I'm, now I'm going to come right out and say it. I'm not offended by what I see here. Um, 
and and considering that the absolute insanity the good kind of insanity that we've had from super sentai for the last two years in terms of mecha designs this uh kind of a return to something a little more just super vehicle uh and uh it it doesn't have any particular themes attached to each component like yeah each component has a uh has a gimmick built into it which okay that's standard affair at this point so whatever i don't care but like i'm not really offended by what i'm seeing here i do like that the legs can still articulate that's that's a good thing um and i also think that the shoulders are going to be able to ratchet outwards to about 90 degrees so that's good i'm glad they keep that um i could be wrong about the shoulders moving in that particular motion but don't you know i'm not I, I i would not be upset in this particular case if the shoulders don't move out they to do. the side they do okay they do yep okay so yeah this go ahead no, i was just gonna say that the way they're built is kind of similar to uh i mean you don't have to know your belt I, I i do so it's pretty much similar to the way that the legs are designed uh yeah i'm, I'm kind of struggling to think of what those are but yeah go ahead no, that was all I have to add. It's just that they're similar, so they should work pretty much the same. Uh, also, pretty tight ratchet. That's all I'm going to be saying. <laughs> yeah, it may, yeah, it makes sense that those would have it. You, you're saying that Boon Boonger has tight ratchets, or... Yeah, King uh, also, uh, also Kinoya, too. <laughs> okay, well... Also Kinoya. Well, I mean, considering the amount of weight that uh, King Oger had to carry in terms of the scorpion and kabuto and then you know whatever other accessories that they that they plunked on there yeah it kind of makes sense that the shoulders and that would be a bit tighter so i mean i i can't i can't be mad about that that actually does make sense you know mm -hmm. but yeah these are these are a bit on the small side this is going to be one of the the like the nine or ten inch uh robos from super sentai that's what i see this being it's not it's not going to be a huge one Hopefully bigger than Kiramazin. Hopefully bigger. Well, yeah, I think it will be bigger than Kiramazin. Kiramazin is, um, I think Kiramazin holds the record right now for being the, the smallest Super Sentai Robo ever. And that's including the original uh, DX Battle Fever Robo back in 1979. I, th I, I wow. think Kiramazin might actually be smaller than that and keep in mind folks the battle fever robo which i do not have i've never had one i think the battle fever robo um has more die cast metal <laughs> but is 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 actually taller is it wait that, that's not what i was gonna say yeah it's 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 definitely taller um but uh, yeah i think here mason's the smallest one ever you know by like 30 or 40 years or whatever but yeah, I think that yeah, th this will be like a, this is this is going to be a Gao King. This is going to be a Deca Ranger Robo, a Victory Robo, which is from Gogo Five. Uh, let's see what other ones. Time Robo Alpha. Time Robo Alpha was one of the smaller ones. Uh, let's see what were some other ones. Can't think of what all they were, but yeah, th I think this is going to be one of the smaller ones. But but I don't think it's going to be the smallest one. I think it's. You know, it'll be one of the nine-inch ones. So, oh, something I wanted to add, Ava, is that whenever you have the chance to see the transformation of this guy, I think it's going to impress you. Like, I think they did a pretty good job uh, because it's not what you usually expect for this, or at least the way for this to transform. Like, it is a unique transformation. Uh, yeah, I can see that. I haven't looked too closely at it, but I can see where the arms fold around. Uh, there's, I can also see that the pelvis splits in half, so that's going to be different, but I just don't know. The other, the, the one thing I am curious about, though, is, oh, okay, so I, I just realized, one thing I have noticed is on, underneath Boon Boomger's chest, there's a large empty cavity under there, but... The wheels for for uh, Boom Trailer are not present. They have disappeared. So, um, oh, wait, maybe. Let's see. Where's that kind of garage mode or whatever it is? That'll that'll be away. Oh yeah. By the way, it's a triple changer. 
That's a surprise. I wasn't expecting that. Okay, well, I see where the arms are. Or I see where the shoulder armor is. Wait, is there parts for me involved here? No, they wouldn't do that. Uh, no. No, no there's no parts for me so far. If they hadn't done that uh, kind of repair base mode or whatever it is they're planning to do, if they hadn't done that, I'd, I'd actually be struggling right now to figure out how this works. At this point, I should start closing this up. Okay, so un unless there's something you, something else you have to add that uh, I have not noticed yet. I mean, I want to. I don't know. I mean, probably you already noticed it, but I. So the, in the gimmick here, you can see that you pretty much put the uh, the mini vehicles on like an attachment that the the, the black. Uh, I don't know how you call this, like the black rail of the uh, of the truck has. And you yep. basically just slide it in, and it basically automatically transforms each vehicle. Yeah, yeah, that's no surprise. We've we've seen stuff like that before. So I, I mean, uh, uh, what's what would be a good example? Uh, Kyo Yujin, Kyo Yujin did something like that. So. Oh, okay. Which this, I, I, okay. So I think this. I mean, this is reminding me a little bit, a little bit, not a hundred percent, a little bit too too Kyo. Because you remember it has like a slice mechanism similar. But the difference between these two is like this one has a purpose versus two Kyo where it didn't even transform anything. It's just sliding. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm I'm not two Kyo was cheap. Two Kyo was boring and, and I said this at the time when when, when I did the commentary, was it last year? Yeah, when I did the commentary last year with you, I said that I had read somewhere, somebody had said that uh, uh, Tukayo is uh, essentially a, a Bandai America Megazord. I'm like, oh my god, it actually is. I can't believe they did that. You know, they did the swirly plastic and all that shit like that. But I'm not getting that vibe here. I, I think, I, I think Tukayo... Uh, which, which, yeah, I did take another look at just a couple of months ago, weeks ago, something like that. I did take another look, and yeah, no, I'm still not convinced. I'm still not going to get that thing. But anyways, uh, yeah, two Kyo, don't care. Um, yeah, I could see myself getting this, but honestly, this this is going to be another occasion where I wait until about where the first wave is over. You know, first wave toys are over, so it'll be about like May or June when we start getting information on the second Robo, or on you know the 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 the, the sixth Hero Robo will start showing up around that point or something like that, or we'll get some more uh, uh, Boom Boomger uh, uh, accessory vehicles. You know, we'll get some more teams involved here. Um, hey, that reminds me. Um, I just realized this is um, Headers 2.0 in a strange way. Because, or, 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 or the, the brother teams or whatever they were, whatever they were called. Um, the reason I bring that up is because you had the Landic team, or, uh, yeah, the Landic team, or, ah, no, I'm sorry, Landic brothers, Siak brothers, and Skyke brothers, but, but they came in, in batches of three. You couldn't make a combined form with just one of them. You had to have all three at the same time. This is essentially the same thing, except without uh, the bizarre like animal heads and nothing but. So like th this, this is another way of approaching it. And like, yeah, okay, all right, I can appreciate that. You're just going back at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, but, I mean, to be fair, I still, to this day, I mean, yeah, by the way, February uh, 5th, 2024, I still have Hyper Go Say Great. I still have um, uh, the Mystic Brothers. Actually, d believe it or not, just recently I took yet another look at um, uh, Go Say Wonder. I'm actually starting to, I'm actually starting to think about, like, oh, maybe I should get it just, just, just to say I have it, you know. It's not going to be a highlight of my collection, but like, yeah, maybe I should should tack that on because why not? Yeah, I have one of those. Yep, yep. <laughs> so, um, 
The henching device, probably not. The 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 weapon, the, what's it called? The the boon. I don't know what it's called. Uh, boon blade. I think it was. I don't remember. Yeah, that's probably not going to get that. Um, in terms of the mecha, this is not bad. I'm not going to say yeah, yeah, it betrays. Yeah, yeah. Um, the has slightly thinner forearms, which kind of bothers me. Um, the, 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 we, I said it earlier, so I'm going to say it again. The lack of articulation that I'm seeing here is to me, it's not regression back to Robos of old, back to even three years ago in 2021. Is that right? Yeah, 2021 when we had, uh, 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 Zenkaiger. I think I think Bandai and Plex and Toei, or no, I'm sorry. I think Bandai and Plex they learned their lesson, um, and so they're they're probably not going to go back. Like unless this fails, which I don't know if this is going to fail or not. I can't really say for certain. This this could go either way. I'm on the fence on this one, but in terms of like the 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 loss of some articulation, eh, okay, yeah, I can I can understand why they did. Like I said, I'm attempting to put my head. Or, you know, putting put put my mind into into their heads and see how this is coming out. This feels like a deliberate downgrade to see uh, how low quality can we be without pissing people off. I think that's what this is. So this is this is like one step shy of. It's like okay, you've got hips, you've got knees, you've got shoulders, and you may or may not have a neck. To me, that's just fine for a base level robo. Shoulders, hips, and knees, great. I'll even say it's safe to not have elbows, okay? But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I'm going to get this. I'm, I'm not disappointed. I'm not angry. I'm not upset. It's just like, hmm, okay, all right. But it's not quite tickling my fancy. Um, so I may or may not skip this one. I'm not entirely certain. Um, I like the, uh, let's see, which ones are they? Boon Boonger Robo Builder. Uh, I def, you, I, I'll, I'll go, I'll go here. If I ever, if, if I get Boon Boonger Robo, the first accessory I'm going to go for is Police. That's the first one I'll go for. Uh, am I going to get, uh, what do they call it? Night Formation? Probably not. So if somebody else wants to take that there, welcome to it. I'm probably not going to get the night version. Um, or it's it's just not calling to me. I'm just not feeling it. Um, I might go for uh, Builder. That's kind of cute, but I think it'll depend on how they transform, which I think it's fairly safe to say they're not going to transform very much. Yes, <laughs> you were totally right. <laughs> I mean, you can pretty much see on the pictures. Dozer oh. is pretty easy to figure out, but uh, Shovel is a little more difficult to figure out how that's going to transform. But I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not angry or upset about about that one. So actually, I kind of like Dozer. I, I like the way they did Dozer. All I have to say, which I said this at the beginning of the video, is uh I just hope this line doesn't become Kira Major's uh, point two, uh, two point, uh, one point two, or whatever. Two point because, one. yeah, two. What do you mean? Yeah, two point. Uh, by that I mean the no combinations, like in between the robots. I've not been actively looking for additional connection points or whatever it is, uh, because this is a triple changer. It makes it a little more difficult to determine that. So it's difficult for me to say, as of right now, it's difficult for me to say if this is going to be um, a San Lobo. I, I, I think they know that uh, robos that don't combine with each other doesn't work very often. Considering how rare it is for them to do that, I think they've, they, they know that it doesn't work. Um, it didn't work uh, when they originally did. I mean, yeah, uh, like the very first, I think the very first time they did that was Flash, Flashman. 
that was the first time where they had a couple of robots. They had two robots ever, but neither one of them combined. They didn't combine with each other. Um, they kind of learned it after that with the, the super live robo. Okay. Uh, but then there was a long drought of... Or, there was a long break. It wasn't until Gingaman in the late 90s. It was either 97 or 98. I think it was 98. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gingaman, which still love that show. Just re rewatched re re it recently. I still love that show. But anyways, um, Gingaman was the first time since uh, what the f f uh. What, it, it was the first time in, a, in, a, in over, well over a decade where none of the robots combined with each other. And I think they learned their lesson there because they didn't do it for a very long time until, hey, look at that, Kira Major came along and the robots don't combine with each other at all. The, the accessories swap between them, so they wanted a little something there. But I think they know at this point that having robots that don't combine with each other doesn't sell particularly well. Or at least it's kind of difficult to get across. Yeah, Kira Major sales weren't that great compared to other Sentai season. Mm -hmm. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I think there was a missed opportunity with uh, uh, with the Seiju from uh, Gingaman. I still think that uh, Giga Phoenix and Giga Rhinos should have been able to combine with Gingayo. I think they should they should have combined. So, like, there's a missed opportunity there, which, alas, ultimately didn't happen, but I think they could easily have done it then and still preserve the excuse, oh, yeah, they don't combine with each other. I think they could have done something there, but, eh, whatever. But, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm going to say that I'm going to hold off on getting anything, anything from this until I start seeing what the second wave is going to do, and then I'll start, I'll start reconsidering, okay, I might get this, I might not get this. So what about you, uh, Chekhov? Are you going to be, uh, you going to be getting anything for this? I think you said you're going to, yeah, you said you're going to get the, the two role plays that we've seen so far. But so are you gonna get so far, uh, I'm going to be getting. I mean, as far as what we've seen right now, because I don't know what's coming. Uh, so far, my what they're going to release now, except for uh, the weapon, because the henshin device at least, I'm pretty much interested in what's going on. Uh, and also, it seems like everything's not going to be that expensive, so I might get everything in one go. Uh, this time, probably not. But, you know, uh, assuming that it's not that expensive, yeah, probably would get it. You're going to go for all uh, all versions of it, or just the base robot and that's it? Uh, as for now, uh, all of it, for now. Okay. So I don't know if, if, if later on, when they keep releasing more stuff, I... We'll go with all the, those other ones. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Probably because when you're watching the show, you you, you sometimes get interested on in the stuff that appears on the show. Uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, I know that one. Okay. Yeah, it's it's it's. I can't say lackluster. That's that's not fair. It's um. Also, one last thing I want to add is like, so you have connections in the arms, in the shoulders, like you noticed, but also you have connections on the uh, on the legs, and they actually can move. Uh, like you can actually rotate them, which is really good. Yeah, there's there's I noticed there's a couple of. Uh clamps or some really broad white colored clamps on the outside of each shin or rather on the outside of each angle i did notice that but the reason i didn't say anything up to this point is because i'm not certain if anything fits on there or not i think that when um well wait no that doesn't uh, yeah this this might be a um cure, uh, was it cure you cure you no, oh, shoot what was it what were they called from you soldier, what are they called? Uh, Kishiryu, Kishiryu O. Uh, we might have a scenario here where it's uh, Kishiryu O Five Knights, where initially they just have three vehicles combined, but at some point there might be five vehicles that ultimately combine with each other to make a super mode or something like that. That mm -hmm. might be what they're doing here. I'm not entirely certain. 
I, I just love the personalization they're going here. Like, you basically can do whatever you want here. Something similar to what Bruce Holder did. So I do actually appreciate that, that you can actually, you know, do all the different modes you want to do and interchange them to whatever position you want. I want to say that I agree with that, but I think they've done limb swap so many times that it's gotten to the point where, like, I can't accept anything other than a limb swap. So if you, it, it's like, I mean, again, it's it's Kishiryu, it's Kishiryu O, which I didn't like, which I do not have still to this day. I still have my Kishiryu Jin for you know, the movie exclusive repaint, but I don't have Kishiryu O, and I also I only have two other Kishiryu, or uh, is that, is that what they called? Yeah, Kishiryus. Um, I, I only, ha you know, the 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 Tiger Lance and then the Cosmo Raptor. I, those are still. That's as far as I went with it. Um, that being said, uh, the idea that the Red Ranger, would, or or whichever Ranger it is, has a single Robo that can operate by itself, and then you just tack on or you just snap on other things as like forearms or shoulders or chest armor or something like that in order to make the the combiner with the other ro or with with the other rangers i don't like that as much Same. Um, you can get away with it with the uh, ryu seo which was the red dragon thunder sword in mnpr season two but you can kind of get away with that because it's not a megazord by itself so doing it this way, I'm like, eh, I don't know. I want the I want the other mecha other than Red Ranger to be included in the, the actual combined form. Yeah, that was one of the main things that thrown me off, to be honest. Because at first I thought like pink and blue were gonna be actual arms, but they actually are not. They're just armor, basically. They're accessory. Yeah, they're, they're mm -hmm. accessories, and that that doesn't That's, work. Yep. But, you know, after the days pass, it's just been going on me and be like, you know what, I'm just going to give it a chance. And, you know, if I don't like it, I just get rid of it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully they, they, they fare better. You know, if you have to if you have to do a gotta catch them all with this show, hopefully they don't pull another Tokyo Rainbow. God willing, they don't do another Tokyo Rainbow, because we do not want that. No. Mm. Yeah, we don't, and they have some similar connection here, so <laughs> it will be scary if they do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. I think uh, I asked you a couple of minutes ago if there was anything else you had that you wanted to add, but I think at this point we're good. I don't have anything else to add, so are we good? We cover everything? Yep. yep. Okay, we covered everything. Well, we have covered the most important thing, so yeah. Okay. Well, Chekhov, once again, thank you very much for joining me on this. I greatly appreciate your input and your insights. Thank you for actually having me in today. Really appreciate being with the uh, with the legendary Ava. Oh, please don't butter me up like that. I feel like I need a shovel. It's my pleasure, dude. And so with that, <laughs> this is Ava Unit 4A saying thank you very much for tuning in.